Welcome to a tutorial on the 8085 and uh, well in this video we're going to learn how to interface and program an 8255A PPI chip okay using the 8085 microprocessor okay so first let's do a recap well, in the previous tutorial what we learned about the significance of each control register bit okay that's uh, all the 8-bit code that you store in the 8255A's control register okay which bit needs to be set and reset and what are the functions of each alright and we had also learned about how to set an 8-bit control word okay so now that we know the significance of each of the register bits and well how to set a control 8-bit control word basically now we're ready to take this entire thing to the next level okay now we're gonna program the 8255A chip for just a simple input output application alright so basically we're gonna cover how to set the output port address that depends upon the interfacing uh, of the 8255A chip with the 8085 microprocessor and also how to access the control register we using a program okay so these two things are the most important whenever you just want to execute some sort of input output function using the a to five five a chip okay so also in the previous tutorial we had come across what well, this problem statement okay where we um, designated the ports B and C lower of the a to five five a chip okay as the input ports okay and uh, port A and C upper okay of the corresponding chip as output ports and thereby we obtain this control word okay so this is basically the hex representation of the 8-bit con control word and uh, here it is alright so this is our 8-bit control word that we had obtained um, in the previous tutorial but here uh, well I want to modify the problem statement a little bit just you know swap the input and output ports okay alright so now the ports A and C upper has become the input ports and uh, while ports B and C lower have become the output ports now well this I just did in order to you know uh, make this thing uh, I mean the problem statement a little bit simpler for you all to understand okay so in that case well the data that's the 8-bit control word which we are supposed to load in the control register will not be 83H anymore okay so this entire 8-bit control word would basically change for uh, the new uh, you know designation of the ports concerned so let's just change it over here so okay now we're supposed to set a new 8-bit control word here okay for the ports A and C upper as input and ports B and C lower as output okay so now you can take the help of this uh, figure on the right okay same as that what I explained in the previous tutorial how to set the control word okay so now since we're doing this um, you know uh, for just a simple input output based operation okay so for that we need to set the D7 bit at uh, logic 1 level for the input output mode so we put 1 over here okay and now we want the uh, mode selection of operation for the 8255A chip now if we just select the mode 0 okay that is you know you said just D6 and D5 bits correspondingly to 0 0 okay so over there if you just do so then the all the ports A B and C for mode 0 they just become simple input output ports so we just want that so we just set D6 and D5 as 0 0 okay and then we need to set port A as well input so that will be possible if we just put a logic 1 in the D fourth bit over here so we put logic 1 over here so that sets port A as input and also we need to set port C upper as input so let's just check so for, for port C upper the bit D3 okay needs to be set to logic 1 to just make it an input port so once again we got one over here okay and now we need to set port uh, B and C lower as output ports okay so for port B a logic 0 will just make it an output port and that should be set to bit D1 so D1 needs to be put to 0 and uh, 
for port C lower, since it's an output port, it's going to become an output port. So we need to put another 0 at the bit D0. There you go. And now bit D2 remains. Now if you just check over here, well, port B can also be operated either in mode 0 or in mode 1. So that you need to select over here. So for mode 0, B can just behave as a simple input-output port. So we just want that. So we just put a logic 0 in the bit D2. There you go. So that's our new 8-bit control word for this problem statement that we have modified over here. Okay, so the hex equivalent, okay, the hexadecimal equivalent of this control word, well, it's going to be 98H, okay, so it's going to be 9 and 8H. All right, so if you just take it over here, you just select the first four bits, okay, so they just stands for about 1001, so that is the equivalent of 9, okay, and then the rest of the remaining four bits, they can just come to 1000. That just equals to Eight, okay, in hexadecimal terms. So this is now our new 8-bit control word, the hex equivalent of the new 8-bit control word, which we're actually going to store in the control register, okay, to enable this kind of an operation stated in the problem statement. Okay, so that was a lot. Now we need to move on to set the port address over here. We need to set the output port address. You see, whenever the 8085 microprocessor would just, you know, output some kind of data, it needs to send it to a corresponding output port address. Now that will only be possible if we just view the interfacing circuit of the 8255A chip with the 8085 microprocessor. Alright, so here we are now. Okay, so now you're gonna learn about the interfacing the 8255A with 8085. Well, in order to interface the 8255A chip with the microprocessor, the 8, 8085 basically, so you can see that, well, we have the 8085 right over here, okay, that's the blue chip on the left, and we have the 8255A chip, that's the pink one on the right, okay. And in the middle we got the latch, okay, the 74LS373 latch chip. All right, and uh, whenever we are basically, uh, you know, interfacing it, we can see that well, we haven't used the higher order data. I mean, address bus over here. We haven't used the, uh, you know, address lines from A8 to A15 at all. We've just not used them, and we just, uh, you know, interfaced it using the lower order address data bus. Okay. So you know this particular connection over here. You're supposed to connect the LAT chip, and then you just give the inputs from the lower order uh, address data bus that's pins 802 to 87 okay into the corresponding inputs of the latch and the enable of the latch is going to be connected to ALE so that the address can be latched okay so let's just think of it this way that whenever uh, the corresponding uh, you know output port address uh, that's where the data needs to be supplied you know, and lots of devices can be connected to the 8085 chip so whenever the output port address is just mentioned in the program the 8085 microprocessor will just send the data to that corresponding device okay and that's gonna appear here first as the lower order 8-bit uh, address that's the output port address and uh, well this will just you know travel through the chip, I mean the LAT chip over here to its output, okay, and uh, at that time the ALE pin will be just sent to the logic zero level, okay, so that the latch remains enabled. Alright, and then after some time the lower order address data bus will just stop sending the address and at that time the ALE pin would go to a logic one state, okay, thereby disabling the latch okay so that making the latch you know insensitive to changes in its input and at that time the address okay that's the output port address will be just latched at the output terminals of the latch chip and it will be continuously supplied to the interfacing chip that's the 8255A concern to just keep it connected with the 8085 microprocessor and at that time this data would just be sent through the data lines okay that's the 8-bit control word I'm talking about into the data line or the data bus of the 8255A. So you can see that well the pins D0 through to D7 that just forms the data bus, 8-bit data bus of the 8255A chip, okay, is basically used in order to send the control word into the control register. 
Okay, so now let's just get on with uh, a little bit deeper into the circuit. Okay, so we can see that we have connected the read-write pins correspondingly, and in order to basically interface or connect the 8255 chip with the 8085 microprocessor, basically, we need to first set the chip select pin over here to a logic zero voltage level. Okay, and that is possible only if the pins, okay, 07 have a logic one voltage level on it, while the pins 06 through to 02 have logic zero voltage levels. All right, and of course we need to set the 01 and 00 pins, that's the output from the latch chip, basically, both at logic one voltage levels. Otherwise, you cannot access the control register. So as this table here shows us that, well, we need to keep the chip select line at logic zero, okay? And now first we need to access the port, uh, or rather, you know, the control register in order to transfer our control word that we just obtained over here, that is 98H, okay? So we need to transfer it to the control register. So in order to access the control register, the lines A1 and A0 both should be kept at logic 1 voltage levels. So here it's very essential to keep A1 and A0 at both at logic 1 levels. Okay, so the outputs from the lines O1 and O0 should be at logic 1 levels also. And now we know that whenever the 8085 is basically transmitting the address to the LAT chip in the first half, okay, of its, uh, you know, cycle, at that moment what happens is that it needs to send the exact binary codes that we have over here starting from the lines 07 through to 0, okay, from its, you know, lower order address data bus that is 87 to 80. So if we might, you know, just write them down over here. So as a conclusion, we have to say that the line 87 needs to be at a logic one voltage level when it's supposed to transmit the control uh, port address, okay? I mean the output port address and the rest of the line starting from 86 through to 82, uh, okay, should be kept at logic zero voltage levels respectively and the lines 81 and 80 zero needs to be kept at logic one voltage level so that we can access the control register so now looking at this table okay so we have just modified the table a bit we've just included the bits 87 through to 82 over here now a1 and a0 needs to be kept at logic one voltage levels for both if we need to select the control register and now in order to keep the chip enabled all the time, I mean the 8255A enabled all the time, we need these exact logic voltage levels, that is from 87 to 82, to be constantly present on the output of the latch. Okay, so this particular address is basically latched by this latch chip that we have over here. So if we might include them over here, that is one and you know all zeros basically. There you go. So whenever you just send this particular combination, as you can see from the top to bottom, okay, so you can basically enable the 8255A chip, okay, and later use it uh, depending upon uh, your convenience to access the concerned ports. So you can see here that there are also the corresponding hex addresses for accessing each of the ports of the 8255A chip depending upon how you're interfacing it. So here we've just used the, as we've just used the lower order address data bus to interface, so these should be the corresponding control codes on the lines 87 to 82 in order to keep this 8255A chip always selected, okay, in order to set this logic zero voltage level over here. Okay, the chip select input. And now since we want to access the control register, we need to keep both A1 and A0 lines at logic 1 level. So correspondingly, the lines AD1 and AD0 would also be at logic 1 lines. Otherwise, this address would not work. So we're going to use this particular, in or, or the 8085 microprocessor is going to transmit this entire 8-bit address okay in order to access the control register whose equivalent hex address well comes to 83h 
all right so this is exactly what we need to do now we have learned how to uh, well, set the output port address and how the interfacing basically influences it okay so we know this and now we need to basically know and we also know how to access the control register we know that and now we need to just uh, you know send the word or rather the control word through uh, a program into the A255A to get our job done okay so we have this at our hand so let's just write down the program and quite obviously we're gonna start by loading the uh, control bit word okay the the 8-bit control word into uh, the accumulator register okay and then we're just gonna send it to the um, control register basically okay so for the program first what we need to do okay so we have our columns made so okay so first we need to do uh, what we need to do is basically well load register a with the control word okay so first I'm gonna write here MVI okay a comma let's just check our control word that is 98h okay so we're just loading it over here a comma 98h uh, okay so now you know what the MVI command does it's basically what well, loads this particular 8-bit data into the register a over here okay and next we're just gonna send this control word into the uh, control register of the 8255a so we're just gonna write here okay we're gonna use a new command that is out okay so here whenever we're dealing with you know simple input output operations okay using the 8085 then we use the out command okay so here the out command basically you know outputs okay it just outputs data okay or rather you know 8-bit data more precisely stored in accumulator okay stored in register a okay and the syntax is just gonna be something like this you're supposed to write well out and then give the 8-bit port address okay so this is our 8-bit output port address so this is just gonna be the output port address that is where we wanna send the data to okay so here our out I mean 8-bit output port address is just gonna be the address of the control register which is 83H as we have seen in this table because this is how the interfacing works depending upon the circuit we just send I mean need to set these particular control codes from A87 to 82 and then keep A1 and A0 lines both at logic 1 levels so that we might access the control register so that way we just send the data over here so we're gonna write out 83H okay so which is of course the uh, address I mean output port address of the control register so if I might add the comments there I just made a room for it so the first comment just you know is pretty much self-explanatory and the next one it just says well the send control word 98H which we you know loaded in the previous line into the register A uh, to the control registers port address okay that's or rather more precisely to 8255A control registers port address okay now as this data that is 98H okay gets stored into the control registers uh, you know uh, storage memory over here so whenever it just gets stored into the control register basically then the 8255A chip will know that it has to designate the ports A and C upper as inputs I mean input ports basically and it has to designate the ports B and C lower as output ports now whatever we want to send as outputs we can just send them to port B and port C lower and whichever inputs we need to access or read we can just directly do it from ports A and C upper by just accessing them okay we just need to provide port address and in order to do that we're just gonna use both the in and out instruction so you've seen how we use the out instruction before and now we're gonna also use another instruction that is in 
which is also you're going to be learning over here. So in the program, now that we have just sent or rather set the control word, okay, what we need to do next is we need to read the inputs from port A and port C upper. So let's just check it out. So this table, yeah, that's our control table. So this table says that in order to access port A, we need to provide a hex address of ATH, okay? So that's the port address of uh, port A, basically the input port address. So we need to read the data from port A. So let's just you know read the data from port A. And in order to do that, we're going to use the instruction in. Okay, I'm just going to write that down over here. Let's just make some space for the comments. Okay, so here this new instruction that is in basically it loads an 8-bit data from an input port, okay, which well also we need you know needs to be an 8-bit uh, input port basically, or rather it, it can also be less, okay, it depends upon the situation. So it just loads an 8-bit data from an input port, and that data is basically you not know, loaded into register A, okay, it just reads the data from this input port and loads it to A. So we're just going to write it down something like this. We're going to just write in and then give the 8-bit input port address okay so input port address that's the address of the corresponding input port from which we're reading the data okay so here since we're reading the data from the port a over here okay so you can just check it from the problem statement yeah we're reading the data from port a so for port a the hex address is ath so we're going to write in ATH okay so reads data okay reads data from port A okay and loads it into accumulator okay loads it into yeah register A that's good now uh, what we need to do is that we are supposed to read the data from port A and will output the data read at port A okay through port B okay so whichever data 8-bit data we read it from port A over here we're supposed to send the same data as output to port B so let's just send this data as output to port B okay so in that case or, all right so let's give you an example over here let's say if the data on port A were uh, yeah something like well one zero one zero okay and then one zero and one zero then we're just you know basically we need to you know, send this data we just accepted it as an input from port A so this is just an input right now and uh, this is loaded into the accumulator and now the accumulator will send it back to port B uh, so that we can just have the same data over here also so let's just do it so we're gonna write the out statement once again so we're gonna just send well out uh, the, give the corresponding address of the port B that is basically the hex address 81H okay so we're gonna write well out 81H okay so this just well outputs okay outputs um, you know data in register A the accumulator now, now the data currently in the accumulator is basically the input uh, 8-bit code that it has read from port A okay so now it just sends the same data to port B so it just sends uh, or outputs the data in register A to port B okay so now we're having the same code as you can see which we just you know read from the port A we are having the same code output over here from the corresponding lines of port B okay now again as the problem statement says we're supposed to read data again from port C upper and then display the same in port C lower okay so now we're gonna read the data from port C upper right so in order to uh, you know re read the data from port C we need to give the hex address of port C also so that is gonna be 82H in this case okay so we're once again we're gonna write well in 82H okay so we're gonna write well 82H so we are reading data okay so reads data from port C okay from port C and loads it into the accumulator register that's a register A okay 
So now we're reading data from port C. We know, now let's just give an example over here. Let's say the data present on port C upper, let's say it's it's something like, well, one, okay, one, 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 one. Okay, we are not just taking it as an input. Okay, so we're just taking this whole thing as input. Or rather, uh, the more significant part is what we take from port C upper as an input. Okay. So since the port C upper has been designated as the input port by the 8-bit control word, okay, then in that case, what we are going to get from port C, while well, we just accept the input from port C, we're just going to get the code available at port C upper. And well, whatever code is av available on port C lower, we're not going to get any of that because it has been designated as an output port only. So the code right now available in the accumulator is basically, well, we don't know what, uh, well, let's just check it out. Yeah, we don't know what is available on the line C0, C1, C2, and C3. So basically in that case, uh, well, D0, D1, D2, and D3, well, we don't know what is available over there. But we know that the lines C4, 5, 6, and 7, that's the port C upper, well, it has all ones on it, okay, which we just took as input data. And now we are supposed to display the same, okay, into the lines, I mean through the lines C0, C1, C2, and C3. So that in order to do that, we need to make the bits of the accumulator D3, D2, D1, and D0 all ones, okay. All right, so now in order to do that, we need to extract these bits first. And well, these bits are basically well, don't care, so we don't care about what they are. So in order to do that, we need to you know perform an AND operation. So in that case, we're going to use a command ANI, OK? Now ANI basically stands for AND immediate, where the corresponding bits present in the register A are ended with an 8-bit data. So you need to, you know, declare it somewhat this way. The syntax goes somewhat this way. You, you get to provide, well, A and I, okay, and then give the 8-bit data with which you want to end the corresponding bits of the accumulator. Now in this case, since we need the bits D7, D6, D5, and D4, okay, then we need to provide an 8-bit data, okay, that will have, well, it's bits D7, to D4 all at logic 1 levels, okay, and the rest D3 to D0 bits at logic 0 voltage levels, so that the hex equivalent or rather the hex uh, representation of the 8-bit uh, data looks something like F0H. So we're supposed to multiply or rather and the contents of the accumulator with this particular data. So this is our data. So we're going to write A and I F zero H and now after performing the ANI operation the accumulator contents are the same as this particular data and now we're supposed to uh, well transfer these ones to the corresponding D3, D2, D1 and D0 positions so we need to rotate the accumulator bits towards the right and for that we need to execute or rather use an instruction known as RAR meaning Oh, when I'm just sorry. It's it's not going to be RAR. We're just going to use a different command over here. Okay, so just kind of don't mind at my mistake. So it's going to be instead RRC. Okay, so it's going to be RRC. So now RRC basically means. Okay, I'm just going to write that down over here. So RRC command will stands for rotate accumulator uh, towards the right. So rotate accumulator or let's write down register A that's better so rotate register A bits okay right okay so we are just supposed to rotate the register A bits towards the right so here one goes so this zero goes here and then to here this one to here and well these bits just you know keep rotating towards the right as many times you just uh, apply this particular statement or this particular command so d1 becomes d0 d2 becomes d1 d3 d2 d4 d3 and this just goes on and on and finally d0 in fact becomes or rather takes the place of d7 bit okay so this is exactly what we're going to do. We're supposed to write, well, RRC, so one byte instruction and nothing else. So we're going to write here RRC four times since we need four bits to be transferred 
over there towards the right so there it goes and finally after executing this the um, you know contents of the accumulator well they just change okay instead they just you know get rotated and become something like this you know zero 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 and then one 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 so we're having d0 d1 d2 and d3 all at logic one levels whereas d4 5 6 and 7 are all logic zeros now we have the corresponding bits set to logic 1 now we can just send them to the port C so that this particular data could be output from port C lower okay so now just ex let's just execute the out command once more so out and give the corresponding address of port C that is 82H so we're gonna provide out 82H and at this moment what you'll find is that the output code at port C upper I mean port C lower sorry has also become 1111 that's the same as the input code that we accepted from port C upper okay so now this just brings us to the end of this program so we just write halt statement and eventually to the end of this tutorial video now here you have just learned a lot about how to you know perf make a hardware connection between an 8085 and an 8255A chip and control it by using a program. So we're going to be seeing you in the next video. So till then it's just going to be a short goodbye for now and keep watching.